Welcome to my Psycho Diaries. Today we are going to see Sitecore Experience Database. Before starting, let me introduce myself. I am Chitendra Ganekar. I am a Sitecore 10.NET certified developer. I am a Sitecore architect working in Mumbai. So in this video, we are going to see the preview of this video. What is Sitecore Experience Database? key components of xdb such as session state server xdb collection database xdb reference database xdb processing server reporting database reporting service you will see how to run sitecore without xdb how to upgrade to, to sitecore xp manual enable and disable uh, how to enable and disable the uh, xdb basic terminology in the web tracking like visitor identification and anonymous and known contacts before starting today's uh, video uh, today's content let me request you if you are not already subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel if you like if you like any videos please click on a like button please do share uh, these videos with your friends and colleagues so let's start uh, today's topic so let's see what is Sitecore Experience Database. The Sitecore Experience Database XDB collects all your customer interaction from all channel sources in the real time. So whenever the user is visiting your website, so if, a, if I'm a customer, I'm visiting your website, I will click on a banner. There is a hero banner. I, I click on it. Uh, after I, that, I fill the form or whatever the activities whatever interaction which is happening my interaction which is happening with the website that all data is get collected in, uh, into the xdb so xdb holds the interaction data from the all the channels not only the data with uh, the desktop but all the channels like mobile also it is collecting the data and that is a real time data collection so first thing is it collects interaction data from all channels it stores data for each individual customer over the entire lifetime so whatever the customer is browsing across his lifetime so today i am accessing the website tomorrow i am accessing the website i'm uh, day after tomorrow i might be accessing the mobile so all those data is getting collected and i stored against me uh, in the xd it shows you the value of a visit and how people are navigating through your content so if i am a customer who is visiting your website so how i am navigating from where to where i am moving i am clicking on hero button hero banner and then i am moving to the article and then i am filling the form all those data is getting filled up and uh, you can see that how i am moving it uh, in your uh, website and uh, on top of that uh, you can have the value of visits okay so it will give you the real-time picture that what is the value of your customer it powers the smart personalization testing and optimization so basically what is happening is it collects customer data from all channels you, you get a 360 degree views of your every customer then it moves and anal you can analyze optimize and fine-tune depending on the data collected then uh, you can you can understand after the collecting the data what is how is your uh, uh, customer so get end-to-end -end customer perspective so you will understand your uh, customer uh, more uh, from this data this is what the experience data but it store the uh, the your customer collection so uh, customer interaction data key component of xdb so let's see key components of xdb So on CD server customer is interacting your website which gets stored first of all in the session DB. So second component which is important for XDB is a session DB. Then that data gets collected into the collection DB. Okay. So that data get uh, uh, collected into the collection DB. Then it get processed by processing server. Then it is converted by processing server uh, aggregate. Uh, and it gets convert that raw data into the format which you can query so that is stored in the reporting DB. Reporting service can be used as an interface where you can query the reporting DB and which get 
displayed on the, your reporting application. So key components here are session DB, collection DB, processing server, reporting DB, reporting service and reporting application. We are going to see all these in the, uh, in a, uh, each and every one in the, in the coming slides. So overall what happens is your session is get stored into the whenever the customer is interacting with your website that uh, that data gets stored into the session and there are two type of session private and shared we will see what is private session or which, uh, what is shared session later once that session is flushed it is get stored in the collection db in the con like a contact history and automation kind of a data then that con that is the raw data which get converted into the reportable format by processing and aggregating and it's converted get, get converted and stored into the reporting db and your reporting service can be used to extract this information which you can which can be you can use as a service uh, to get a data and display it as well as it is displayed on the application so these are the key components of the xdb now let's see uh, the first key component that is session state server as a visitor browses around your site information about that visitor and their interaction is stored in a session when the session ends this information is a flush to the xdb session state enables you to store and retrieve values for a user as as the user navigates pages in a web app what the session state server uh, does as name suggests it's a session which it holds the session so whenever a visitor i am browsing your website so that bra the, in that session whatever i am doing that interaction is stored into the session okay once my session ends once i close the application then that session is get flushed to the xdb okay so session states enables you to store or retrieve values for a user in the session okay so there are two type of a sessions which are uh, xdb use first is a private uh, session state now what is private session state it contains information about contact visit information such as the pages viewed goals converted or campaigns triggered private session state is a private to the browser being used to access the website if a contact accesses a website simultaneously from their desktop and mobile phone each device will have its own private session state so basically a private session state stored a data for the that session so if i am a i am a, a, a visitor who is visiting the website desktop as well as a mobile so what is happening is for the desktop it will create a separate private session and that will record what are the things which i am doing what are the activities i am doing or whatever the interaction i am doing on the desktop side so it's that for that session itself it is used whereas for the mobile phone it will create a, another session where it will store a data for that mobile session okay so that is called as a private session what is share, shared session state Shared session state contains information that is shared across a potential multiple active, active session. This include any contact information that has been loaded into the tracker at the start of the session. So shared session is a basically it is a shared as name says it. So if I am using a multiple session then this session state will hold the common data which is shared upon the both the uh, both the data uh, active session it is not only one desktop it can have a multiple session in the desktop also right so all that's common data is stored in the session that is a shared between across the session that is stored in the session uh, shared session state it includes the uh, data like contact information so we, at the end we will see what is known contact and uh, non contact so whatever the contact is there so that contact information is first time loaded so that information is shared up multi across the multiple uh, active sessions okay so that is also get stored into the session uh, shared session state so session state servers holds the data in the session once you flush it goes to the xdb and that xdb collection database now we will see the xdb collection database stores analytics data including contacts and interaction the xdb collection database stores the analytics data including contacts and interaction so i am cd server and cd2 we are browsing it that gets stored into the session and if you flush it the complete data of that session is goes to the xdb 
So now how does that data is stored? So there are two uh, uh, databases. It is use a sharding mechanism where you there we will have a two kind of a database. One is a shard databases which stores the contact interaction and device profile. If you have installed the XDB, you will find like database name site for instance name underscore XDB uh, double uh, underscore XDB collection dot shard zero shard one shard two. So that is the sharding. Okay, so number of shards you have created depending on that data that data gets stored in the contact interaction and device profiles now what is the shard map manager it actually manages all those shards okay so shard map manager database is kind of manages the multiple shards db so you will have one database which is called as a site instance name double underscore xdp dot collection dot shard map so shard map manager database is to manage the multiple shard dbs okay so if you have a multiple shard databases so that will get managed by the shard map manager database so experience data is sharded in the following ways. How does the sharding is happening uh, in the experience data? First is the contact and interaction, interaction data is sharded by the contact type. Okay, the identifier indexes is sharded by the identifier. Device profiles are sharded by the device profile ID. Okay, now what is sharding? Uh, I am not going in the detail of this. This is a mechanism of SQL where database sharding is the process of storing a large database across a multiple machine. If you remember in Sitecore 8 uh, lower version, we are using a MongoDB. Why we, you are using a MongoDB there? Because MongoDB is, was able to store a large database. Okay. Uh, uh, no SQL data, uh, it's, uh, databases are used to store the, uh, the database which has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, records okay now it's interaction you can imagine it is it is storing all the data so it is a huge database so for storing that we use the database sharding mechanism and for the x collection databases that's the reason we have the shared zero shared a to one shared a to that kind of a databases where we will install the site code so it is using a sharding mechanism for, for the xdp collection the next key component is the XDB reference data database. Now, what is XDB uh, reference data database? The reference data service and XDB reference data database is used to secure the integrity of the data in the Sitecore experience database. It is a center stored for data reference throughout the experience platform processes such as tracking, aggregation and reporting. So, it is a database and it is a service which is used to store the common data at a center place so that you have a integrity of the data in there okay so throughout the process of uh, your uh, the experience platform sites the tracking aggregation reporting the common uh, data which is referred by a multiple uh, roles like you have a reference data service xdp processing marketing automation engine marketing automation operation service all these roles of site for servers are referring to the xdp reference database it is pointing to the same database so that the data integration uh, integrity of a data remains same so say like a goals campaign definition marketing automation plan these which you are created taxonomies this once you created it was created into the master database then content management data role i mean the cm server their metadata to the reference data service deploys the metadata to the reference data service which in turn store the data into the xdb reference database so once the data is stored in the master database and there is a when once you create a goal or campaign you have to deploy it Okay, so once you click on a deploy, it actually gets stored into the, uh, the reference database by using a reference data service. Storing the marketing metadata in XDB reference data database means that the integrity of the data in the XDB is secured and that is deployed data can now be used by aggregation process, marketing automation service or in reporting. So once you deploy it, it goes to the XDB reference database. Now all the service in the, in the processes of experience platform, it uses the same data. So the data integrity will be there. The next component is the XDB processing server. The processing and the aggregation component extract information from the captured raw analytics data that transform into the form suitable for the use in reporting application. It also performs the specific task on the collection database that involves mass update and process, uh, mass update. So XDB processing server is the, is the one where the data, the raw data is collected in your XDB collection database. That XDB collection database is a raw data which get processed by aggregation uh, service, okay, 
in the processing server and it creates a data which can be queried okay which can be used for the reporting application so that is the job of your processing server so what is the processing activities are Inter interaction aggregation is the process by which interaction data is grouped and reduced into a format that is suitable for a report the so first is the interaction aggregation so it performs the aggregation service aggregation and that is grouped and reduce the data into the format that is suitable for reporting second is the contact processing offers an extension point of a resp a responding to the creates or updating a contact each time a contact is changed or updated an event is queued up for processing along with the type of modification that was made so once you get contact created okay so that contact might get updated okay so uh, or it can get merged also so two contacts can get merged also so all those processing is done by the xdb processing server rebuilding the reporting database reprocesses the interactions that have already been aggregated into the reporting database rebuilding the reporting database reprocesses the interaction that have already been aggregated into the reporting database so there is some aggregation has happened then if the rebuilding of the reporting database is also done by the processing server aggregation processes groups and reduces the live or historical data from the collection database so that it can be used by the reporting database and stores like for reporting application so aggregation is actually a process which groups and reduce the live or historical data from the collection database so it gets a collection data from the collection database it aggregates so that it can be used by the reporting database so these are the key components of the uh, xdb now we will see the next one reporting database reporting service and reporting applications the reporting database is a sql server database that stores aggregated data from the collection database suitable for the fast querying and reporting so as we see in the in last slide that the processing the server will process the collection database and it will make the data into the format where you can query and reporting and that for data is stored into the reporting database reporting service api allows you to execute queries and extract information from the collection and reporting database the reporting service api will allow you to queries uh, query the uh, database reporting db now we will see what are the different reporting applications we can have first is experience analytics which provides a dashboard and reports for a marketers and marketing analysts to identify patterns trained in experience data collected from their website and potentially other external data so it's a dashboard where you can see the analytics and the reports for by the for the marketers okay then you have the experience profile which will let you find and monitor individual contacts that have interacted with your brand so it will store the contact information and to show you what is the what are the uh, contacts which are interacted with your, your website and then we have path analyzer path analyzer let you create a map showing the sequential path that contacts take when they navigate through the your website interact with campaigns and trigger goals and outcomes so path analyzer will uh, will tell you how the customer has interacted in your website so this experience analytics experience profile path analyzer and other tools you will see in the in some other video here just you remember these are the few of the reporting application where the analytics data is getting used now these are all the key components of the xdb Now let's see how to run the site for without the XDB. So if you are deployed the, uh, if you do not want to run the XDB because XDB does take the processing uh, time and all those resources has been take, uh, taken out. So X, if you want and you are not utilizing the XDB, then how you will be running the site code? So there are two options. First option is disable the XDB and the tracker. So there are two things: XDB and the tracker. So tracker is where you are tracking your company. So you disable uh, tracking the interaction, disable the XDB and tracker on the content delivery and content management server. This puts both the server roles into CMS only mode and support for the uh, some excite for XP features such as as in session personalization. So uh, you can disable the XDB and how can be done that that we will see later. Uh, next slides. Uh, so you you can disable the XDB as well as the tracker. The tracker is on content delivery and the content management uh, server and content management server. So if you disable those, even though you are using XP, it will you it will not utilize the XDB. Okay, we, but at the same time you can have the XDB, XP other features and as well as you can have the in session personalization. Okay, 
In second option, if you're using the site code 9.1 and later, then you can deploy the CMS specific uh, version of the content delivery and content management tools that have been optimized for the running the experience manager only. So you have in 9.1 after 9.1 you have a CMS only mode like for the content delivery and content management that you can utilize. In this case, Sitecore XP binaries and configuration files are not included, which means that only the limited set of XP features and <coughs> features are supported. This, these are the two ways you can run the uh, uh, the uh, Sitecore without XDB. First is to disable your XDB and uh, tracker on content delivery and content management server. Or in the 9.1 server, you have a CMS specific role, so you can install those roles on the so that it will not run the XDB. If you are using a Sitecore management license, okay, you are having a Sitecore management license and you are using Sitecore 9.0 or 9.1 and above version. Then, if you're right now, if you're not using the XDB, then in future you can easily use the XDB feature by upgrading it. So now, how we can do that? That we also will see in the next slides. How to upgrade now? Uh, how to upgrade to the site for XDB? If you're not using XDB, so how how you can use it? Okay, if you want to, how how can you gonna upgrade your website to use the site for XP? Okay. So first thing is you're using the content delivery and content management tools and installed using the XM scale package. You have you use XM scale package, you are using site for 9.0 version. You have installed your content delivery and content management tool. Okay, or you are using your content, you have installed your content delivery and content management tool using XP scale package and you're using 9.0 and 9.1 plus uh, version. So in both these cases. One is the XM scale packages for 9.0, another is the XP scale packages for 9.0 or 9.1 and above. In that case, what is happening is some marketing features are available. You will have the binaries and configuration files used by Sitecore XP. Are they present in the your uh, Sitecore instance? Okay, now you want to upgrade it. How to upgrade it? You just need to manually enable the XDB and tracker in the configuration. So you will see how you can do the XDB. How you can enable the XDB manually. That we will see later. But if you have this XM scale package with version 9.0, if you are using XP scale package 9.0 and 9.1 .9 first version, in that case you just have to manually enable the XDB and tracker. It will start working. Now, in case you are you are installed content delivery and content management role using XM scale package and you are using site for 9.1 plus uh, uh, version. In that case, you have a limited number of marketing features, binaries and configuration files. This is very important. Binaries and configuration files used by site for XP are not present. So it is not present in your instance. Okay, it is improving the performance. So if you are using a content delivery content management with XM scale package with 9.1 and above, then there is no binary configuration XP are present. In this case, if you want to upgrade it, you have to redeploy the content delivery and content management tools using XP scale package. Okay, so these are the uh, these are the ways you can you can upgrade your site core XP uh, to use the uh, uh, your XDP. Let's see how you can manually enable or disable the uh, XDB. So there is a one patch configuration file site core XDB config. In here we have to update the two properties. First property is XDB enable. So you have to make that setting name XDB enable is false. So if it is false, then the XDB enable is uh, uh, XDB is not enable. So if you if you want to enable it, you just to make it true. So enable or disable tracking in the XDB on the reporting server. So this will disable or disable the XDB on the reporting server. There is another one is called XDB dot tracking dot enable. So if you you can make it true or false. If you enable it, it will uh, tracking on the content management and content delivery. So this is XDB dot tracking enable is for the content management and content delivery. XDB enable is for the reporting uh, server. Uh, now let's see basic basic terminologies used in a web tracking. So the Sitecore web tracker enables you to track and identify contacts and their interaction during their visit to your content delivery CD instance. So CD instance will track and identify the con uh, contacts, okay, and it adds into the Sitecore web tracker. Okay, so to enable the tracking programmatically, you have, there are two things which we have to do. First is to ensure that your layout contains the MVC helper or the visitor identification tag. Okay, and second is ensure that tracking is enabled. 
the second point you already seen that how you can track you can make your tracking is enabled by just changing the property how can do the first thing that ensure that layout contains the mbc helper and the visitor identification tag this you must have done for your project okay so every layout you will see uh, the this code where you are adding the visitor identification okay this will enable your uh, tracking on the cd or cm server now uh, let's see what are the contacts there are two type of contacts first is anonymous contact it will have only have the anonymous identifier which always include the allies identifier it is anonymous it is uh, okay as the name suggests the known contacts are the at least have the one known identifier now what is contact identifier you see here uh, in the known contacts also have one known identifier so what is contact identifier contact identifier is basically uniquely identifies the contact it's a unique id which identifies the contact to system outside the xp so contact identifiers is something which is unique and which is which is easily you can identify outside the xdp example of a valid identifier which includes the website login so if you have a login so that unique id you can use as a new you contact identifier you have a social media handler so that social media id you can use as a contact ident identifier as you can have the add uh, network ids also you can use as a contact identifier so contact identifier basically is a something some unique id which is outside xdp each identifier consists of three things okay so every identifier will consist of three things first is an identifier such as a username so identifier is something which is unique which is called as a username an identifier source which describes where the identifiers come from so as you see the contact identifier is a unique id from the outside the xdp so this identifier source tells you from where it is come as so if you are using a facebook it will come it will be facebook if you are using a twitter it will be twitter okay the third part which says the identifier contact type so which is either contact identifier type dot anonymous anonymous contacts or contact identifier type dot known so these are the two types of contacts anonymous contacts and known contacts contacts are uniquely identified by the combination of identifier and source so how the contacts are identified there are two uh, there is a combination of a identifier and source In this combination should be unique Okay. Identifiers will store the username, identifier source stores the from where it comes from. So these two uh, 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 fields will define the unique identif identifier for the contact. Now how does the contact identif identification process works? Okay, so let's see that. So you have an anonymous contact who is visiting your website okay so he is visiting your website and he is anonymous okay so he is just browsing your website so in that case whatever the interaction which is happening is anonymous which is stored in the xdp okay there is no no nothing is unique there okay then uh, somehow this user is logged in on your website from the facebook authentication now it is logged in your website and you get to log uh, login and you got the user information so it's provide the unique identifier now it, it you have a unique identifier like it's a facebook id and the source is a facebook okay so then you it, it search for the unique uh, the, whether that user exists in the xdp if it doesn't exist then it update that xdp okay and then uh, say uh, that is stored into the xdp now this same user after la later he is again browsing your website he logged in then if once he log in here we call some method called identify and that identify will identify that user because he has already updated in first session right so that session is updated so there is a user okay so this identified user is known as a known contact because you got the unique identifier so now he is a known contact okay so this is how the process happens for the contact identification one specific note for you see all these updates are not directly happening to the xdb it is happens through the xconnect so xconnect we will see later okay but this is how the process has happens anonymous contact it can be converted into the known contact as known contact will hold a unique identifier so this is the basic contact identification process so we are done for today thank you for watching uh, if you like the video please click on a like button please do share this